I'll be showing my top 20 tips and tricks for Microsoft Outlook. It turns out I started my Microsoft career in Outlook over 25 years ago when it was a wee little baby hadn't ever even shipped version one. It's come a long way since then, so let's get started. The first tip is dictation built into Outlook. I'm here in Outlook desktop, which is part of Office 365, and I'll open a new email message. On the message tab, the home tab, over here on the right is dictate, and I'm gonna put my cursor in the body and click dictate. Outlook has really nice dictation in the email message, period. I can also use the new voice commands, such as this, new line. I'm typing another line here with my voice, bold that. <laughs> If you go to settings, you can turn profanity filter on or off. You can turn voice commands on or off. You can even add auto punctuation. And we have lots of languages that we support. All the different languages are here and new ones are always coming. The second tip is insights. Insights in Outlook lets you really be thoughtful about how you're using your time and we use our productivity system to help give you tips. So on the home tab in Outlook, over on the right, there's an insights button. And let's click this to get set up. Insights gives me some options, things like planning my time away, if I'm gonna be time away from work. If I wanna get insights on people in my network and how much I'm working after hours, maybe I'm always working on the weekends and don't realize it, go to my dashboard there. How about focus time every day? Book time for distraction-free deep work every day. Let's click this. And you know what? I wanna make sure that I schedule my focus time and automatically book it. And there's some little tips here about creating a focus plan. I'll say book time now and it's searching out for focus time. And what it's done is it's booked time over the next few weeks and you can see all the details there and it also will automatically change teams to do not disturb. And I say, got it? I could do other things, emails that need my attention. Oh, there's a mail from Alex Wilbur that I should check out, make sure I look at that. Uh, maybe I'm not gonna open it right now. It's just one of those remove me from those alias spams. Down here, even setting lunch hours. You know what, during the pandemic, I keep forgetting to eat lunch and taking time. So I'm gonna hit confirm, add that, and even doing things like prepare for my meetings. Get ready for your upcoming meetings, and it gives you some helpful tips here. Even booking preparation time for some of these things 15 minutes before, 15 minutes after. There's also a nice little dashboard here that I can go to. So if I click this, it's gonna take me into my productivity dashboard. Here's my productivity dashboard with my analytics. There's some tips here. I'm not gonna go through everything, but you can see focus, well-being, network, and your collaboration. A ton of stuff here. So all that information about how much you're in Outlook and your calendars and booking and all those things, that can get tallied up and you can give yourself some insights that you might not have time to do normally. Lastly, back here in Outlook, if you wanna make some settings for insights, you click the little gear here, and here's some settings when your lunch hour might be, your focus plan, and also some other details on how this all works. The third tip is sharing from Teams into Outlook really easily. I'm here in a team, and here's a message about something that's due tomorrow. I wanna to actually send this out an email. If I go to the dot, dot, dot menu here, I drop it down, and I choose Share to Outlook. And what this lets me do is it puts that message right here in the body. If I need to send this off to Alex, I can do that. And there's the title. That was the title of the message. Is the title of the subject here. And I hit send. And as easy as that, I've mailed that message right off to Alex. The fourth tip is read aloud with word and line highlighting built right into Outlook. So now I can have my messages read out loud. This is also great for accessibility scenarios, inclusive scenarios, dyslexia, vision impairments, and beyond. So I've got a message here and I'm gonna put my cursor over here in the body and on the home tab, there's this read aloud. So let's click that. I need to get a copy of that PPT deck that we were working on. And I can hit pause here. I can change the reading speed. I can change different voices. There's lots of different voices you can download and use. And if I have this message open, it's the same thing. On the message here, I just hit read aloud. I need to get a copy of that PPT deck that we were working on. So read aloud is built natively into Outlook to read mails out loud. The fifth tip is use tighter spacing, which compacts your message list to give you more space to see all of your mails. So if I expand this, just you'll see a little more visually, I've got a set of messages here and I wanna to try to collapse this to get more space. If I go to the view tab here and then I'll go to use tighter spacing, I click that and see I just compressed it all. Really handy, really quick. So that's expanded and that's collapsed. The sixth tip is drawing tools in Outlook. A lot of people don't know about this. So I'm gonna open up this message and reply, and maybe I wanna draw my answer when I'm replying here. So I hit draw, and we'll click drawing canvas. 
and it adds a nice canvas here. And I can do a bunch of things. I'm gonna go here and you can change pen colors. There's a few colors. I'll choose rainbow ink. And because you know everyone likes a rainbow response and I'll give a big okay. And then a rainbow. I'll send you that PowerPoint deck. I can erase things. So maybe that rainbow was a little, little too much. And if you wanna go back to a regular mouse pointer, you click here and then you can go and type my response. And I'll send that off. The seventh tip is creating a quick poll. This uses Microsoft Forms technology right into Outlook. So I'll open up a new email. I'll send this to Alex, and it's gonna be a lunch poll. If I go to the insert menu, I'm gonna choose poll right here. It opens up a pane on the right-hand side, and I can input a question. Where did you wanna eat for lunch? Option one, pizza place. Option two, burger heaven. And I could add more options. I could delete options. I could let them choose multiple answers. But in this case, they're only gonna get to choose one place for lunch. We'll hit next. And that's what it's gonna look like. And this email address will be sent with my response. We'll click add to email. And it inserts a link right here. Where do you wanna eat for lunch? View or vote in the browser. And there's a little note here. Responder will see both the poll card and the link in email. Great. So we're gonna send that off to Alex right now. And let's switch to Alex to see what he sees. Okay, I'm signed in as Alex and he just received a mail about a lunch poll. Where do you wanna eat for lunch? I wanna to go to Burger Heaven and I'm gonna click vote. Great, looks like there's one vote for Burger Heaven. I hope this one wins. And it's just that easy. Now Kara will also have that actual form in her Microsoft Forms so she can access that later. The eighth tip is screenshotting directly into an Outlook email message. I've opened up an email message and we're gonna send that to Alex and I put my cursor here. Now, the last window that you have up is what screenshot's gonna pull. So in this case, maybe there's something in Teams that I wanna screenshot to Alex about the due date tomorrow. So there's Teams. I'll go back and choose screenshot here and then choose screen clipping. Okay, there's Teams and it's gonna make the screen go gray. I click in the upper left, I drag my cursor down like this and we're gonna let go and it pops it right into that email. So a really quick and easy way to screenshot. You know, I give the title due tomorrow and we'll send it. The ninth tip is the ignore thread feature. I love this feature because a lot of times I might be getting a lot of emails and people replying back and forth and back and forth and I just wanna ignore that. I don't wanna see that mail thread anymore. And the classic one is the old can you remove me from this email alias? And there's all these people responding. Alex says it, then Ella says it. You know what, I'm gonna ignore this entire email thread. So I'm gonna select one of the messages in the thread here. And right up here, if you see this, I hover, there's the little, little uh, no smoking sign as we used to call it, ignore conversation. And there's a shortcut, control delete. So I'm gonna click ignore conversation. And what happens is boom. All those got moved to deleted items. And any new thread, there's all the, all the items here. Any other mail message about take me off this alias or why are you responding to this big bright alias, all that gets ignored permanently. You'll never have to worry about it again. The 10th tip is how to use cleanup inbox. Now, let's say I've got a bunch of email responses in here about you know, where should we go for lunch? Okay, we decided where we're gonna go for lunch. I don't wanna go jumping through my inbox to find all the different messages there. So I'll click one of these, and if I choose this for clean up, I drop it down, and I'm gonna say clean up conversation. And what that's gonna do is delete all the other messages. So there's three other messages here from that same thread. It's gonna delete them all up at once. But what's even better is clean up folder. Now in your inbox, if there's a bunch of different threads that have exploded in different directions, you're like, I just wanna clean all that up. Clean up folder. And you see how those just disappeared? And if there were other messages, they would be removed as well. So it only leaves the most recent message that you had in that thread. So I use this one personally, the cleanup folder, all the time. And it's a great tip. The 11th tip is disallowing meeting forwarding. I'm gonna go to the calendar and I'm gonna create a new meeting. Now this is a really secret meeting and only Alex and Ella are allowed to come to it. I don't want them to forward that to anyone else and it's gonna be in a top secret location. Now to turn off the ability for anyone else to forward this meeting, I'm gonna drop this down, response options, and uncheck allow forwarding. That means when Alex or Ella receives this meeting, they cannot forward it to anyone else. And this is a great one, especially for if you're at a larger company and you have 
some top secret stuff going on, or if you're in the education world and you have a very confidential meeting, it's good to uncheck that allow forwarding. So now when I send this off, I'll send it to Alex and Ella. So here's the secret meeting from Kara. Alex opens it up and the first thing he's gonna do is try to forward it to someone, but forward is disabled. Look at that right there. It's grayed out. So Alex cannot forward this meeting. The 12th tip is the at mention feature. So I'm gonna open up an email message and hit reply. And at mentioning will add them automatically to the to line and help get their attention. So I might say here, hey, and then I hit the at symbol and start typing Henry's name, Henry Marler, and see how it adds Henry right up there. So I at mention him and I can ask, what about Chinese food? And I can hit send and then Henry will be at mentioned and added right into that message. The 13th tip is quick steps. Quick steps can help you move messages automatically really fast things that are like little mini workflows that you can do repetitively and save yourself time. So on the home tab here, you're going to see quick steps right here. And you have some examples, move a message to a certain folder, forward to manager, something like done, meaning here's an example where it says Mark's a selected email as complete. So these are nice little quick time savers. A common one is the move to certain folder. So in this case, I get a lot of mails about lunch. I'm going to click the move to, and the name of this one's going to be these lunch messages. And what folder do I want to move it to? I want to move this to the lunch folder. And also it'll mark it as red after I move it. So this will, when I click on it, it'll mark it as red and move it to the lunch folder. Let's click save. Now you can see this is the lunch quick step. So I've got Ella here and if I click, okay, that goes to the lunch folder. What happened was, is if you go to my subfolder here, see lunch, it just moved that into my lunch folder. Hey, there's another one about the lunch poll. I'm going to click this lunch. Just it's like a little workflow. And there's a bunch of different ones that you can create. You can create new ones too. So if I create new here, I can create my own quick step and there's lots of actions. So this is where you start to get into what's called rules and creating all sorts of different workflows. The 14th tip is translate. This allows you to translate any message you receive in a different language into the language that your office is set to. And my office is set to English. So here's a message in Spanish and I don't read Spanish. So I'm going to go on the home tab here and then way over on the right, there's this translate button. I drop that down and choose translate message. Now it immediately translates it into English because that's what I'm set to. I can show the original and I can go back to English and I can even set my translation preferences if I want as well. And we support over 70 different languages for translation. So this is a very inclusive tool to try out in Outlook. The 15th tip is dark mode for Outlook. This can make it easier on your eyes. So let's go to the upper left and choose the file menu. And then down at the bottom, choose options. And then we're going to go right here under office theme and drop this and choose black. Hit OK. And now we're fully in dark mode. Now, one cool thing is you actually, some people want to have a white message background, but the rest of it dark. And right here, there's this little sun and I can switch this background, see how it makes it white. And I can go back to the moon, switch it black. So some people want to have that white background like that. You can do that with dark mode. The 16th tip is the focused inbox. This can help you keep some of the mail that might not be as important out of your main area. And you can look at that maybe once or twice a day or a week and then have your main inbox a little more focused. So if I go to the view menu here, I'm going to choose show focused inbox. And what happens is see how this is focused. These are people that I know are in my organization. Other might be things like this is a power automate newsletter. There's a message from the Pear Deck team or my analytics. So this lets you kind of focus back and forth. This is really nice if you get a bunch of email and you don't want to get distracted by maybe things that are less important. I can turn that off again by just unchecking focused inbox and that will show all my messages like you normally might see. The 17th tip is the tasks and to do bar. If I go over on the right hand side here on the view menu, I see to do bar. This lets me turn on a calendar right here. It also lets me turn on tasks. I could also turn on people as well for my contacts. So now it's kind of nice. I'm in Outlook. I can glance over at my calendar. I can navigate this, see when my upcoming meetings are, and then also glance at my tasks and manage those all from within one view. So it's right here. I can turn that on and off really easily. The 18th tip is getting your weather forecast right through Outlook. So if I go to the calendar here, 
Right here, you can see I've got Seattle, Washington. That's where I live. It gives me the weather forecast, even with some details. And I can see tomorrow. Oh, it's gonna rain on Sunday. Now I can also add other locations. So I can drop this down, you know, hey, here's Washington DC weather. It looks a little nicer there. Maybe I wanna plan for skiing. I've got my big sky here. I can check out what the temperatures are there. So you can add locations right here. And then you can always have weather, whether it's local or you wanna check out weather in other parts of the world, super easy. The 19th tip is one that I call the career saver rule. It's one that I have myself and it might only save you a couple times a year, but when it does, it's a big deal. And that is on every message I send, delay it by one minute. And I'll show how to create that. So I go to rules right here, drop it down and choose manage rules and alerts. A rule is something that can be applied kind of like workflow, like quick steps, but this can add more complex workflow. We'll click new rule. Now this is key here. Start from a blank rule, apply rule on messages that I send. So apply this rule after any message, select conditions. I'm just gonna say every mail, no matter what. Okay, that's yes. What is the action? We will choose defer delivery by a number of minutes. So that means hold that message in my outbox and we'll just say by one minute, hit okay. Hit next, hit next again, no exceptions. And we'll call this the career saver and we will hit finish, okay, and then hit okay again. So why is this a career saver? Well, let's say I've got a message up and I'm gonna send it off to Alex and I'm really mad he just sent me a mail that made me so mad and I'm gonna say, Alex, this is a raging flame mail and I type all these really mean things and I put exclamation points and I put it in capitals and I'm just like, darn that Alex and I hit send. All of a sudden I say, oh wait, no, no, I, oh, I probably shouldn't have put it in all caps. Wait a second. Luckily, it's in your outbox. It's just sitting there. It's the cool off period for your email. And so, oh, wait a sec. You know what? I'm gonna double click this and it's not a raging flame mail. Uh, it's uh, Alex, let's talk. You know, and I'm, I'm not gonna say mean things. I'll say, we should have a Teams meeting about this discussion. And it's a little bit more chill and I'll hit send. So that is why it's so important. It, it, only kicks in a few times a year, but when it does, you will be happy that it does. The other thing that's nice is sometimes you hit send on that mail and right as it's sending, you see some obvious giant spelling error or you forgot to add something and you're like, oh wait, there it is. It's still in the outbox. It's sitting there for one minute. The 20th and final tip, and if you've stayed for the last tip, this is one of my favorites. So this is one that is very special to me. If you go to the calendar, we're gonna be able to mail my calendar as an email to anyone I want. So sometimes people will send me emails saying, hey Mike, uh, when are you free? Can you send me a copy of your calendar? And this is one that it's pretty low tech, but it's actually very easy to do. Now we have to enable this on the toolbar because it's not on by default. So on the upper left, click this down to customize the quick access toolbar and we'll choose more commands. Now we're gonna drop this choose commands from and drop it down and choose all commands. Now we're gonna scroll down till we find email calendar. So select email calendar and home here, we're gonna create a new group and it's gonna be the email group. So we'll rename that and it's, we'll just call it email. And we're gonna add email calendar into email group by clicking the add button. So it's added email calendar and hit okay. Now you'll see this email calendar button. So I've got my calendar here. Now when I click this, it pops up a dialog, says what's the date range? And maybe someone says, hey, in the next two weeks, when are you free? So I choose January 25th through February 5th, and I'm gonna click OK. And what it's gonna do is generate an email calendar. Look at that, it has everything, free busy, all the way through these different dates. And so people then can easily see what days I'm free and what days I'm not. It even generates an ICS file, an iCal file. And so I can send this to Alex and say, hey, here's all the dates that I'm free, and I just hit send. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you wanna keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.